Hi there, my name is Jared Green. Um, I run the physio clinic at Barefoot in Harbin and Kings Heath, and it's Monday, the uh, 18th of May, and we've got together some brilliant people. So we've got uh, Richard here, who is Think Psychology. He's got an amazing team of clinical psychologists at Barefoot, and we've got Mandy. And a lot of people know Mandy because Man Mandy's a big thing on Instagram. And Mandy does amazing work to support lots of mums-to-be and new mums at Barefoot and all over the West Midlands. And we've also got Tanya. And Tanya runs the, normally, in normal times, runs the studio in King's Heat. But during uh, COVID-19, she's running Barefoot. So, so Tanya's going to tell us all about Barefoot. And really, what we wanted to do is just, uh, we normally meet up either in uh, probably the Plough for Coffee or at Gorilla Coffee in, in King's Seat. So normally we see each other face to face, but now we're, we're having to do the, uh, the Zoom catch-ups. And we really wanted to tell you, uh, our patients, clients, uh, communities, what we've been up to in the last eight weeks, and also what our, what our current plans are and what we're planning for the future. So what I'm going to do is hand over to Tanya, and Tanya's gonna tell you about what's been happening at Barefoot. So over to you, Tanya. So hi, I'm Tanya, and um, well, we uh, had to stop the, the classes on the studio, so now we are running classes online. Um, and uh, with a, a few of the, the teachers uh, we have at Barefoot, and we have classes for different levels, so from beginners to advanced people, uh, students, and we have different styles, um, uh, different uh, themes as well, and also for pregnant ladies. And uh, we have classes running every day and different times of the day so that uh, it can be adaptable uh, to everyone's routines and because um, we know some people are still working as key workers and probably if they have children at home they might need different times to to adapt to that and then we have the um, the yoga teacher training that also we needed to to pause that um face to face at least because we're still going on with classes but online and um, we had to adapt the schedule as well, um, bringing all the, the theory part of the, the teacher training to um, this time so we can leave space for the practical classes after the lockdown and uh, give more space and time for the, the, the students, the trainees to um, do the teaching practice. Um, and we the, the teacher training is usually uh, one weekend per month and now we have the classes running on a, um, a weekly basis and we think that this helps from the point of view that we keep uh, the students connected and bounding and they support each other they do they teach each other online as well so this has been helping a lot doing the the classes on a weekly basis um yeah we also have been been adapting the um the um, the information that we give out of the classes so the end outs and the homework so that uh they can have the opportunity to increase their practice at home as we don't have um practice face to face now um and we needed to create some flexibility as well um because we we understand that some of the trainees uh, have plenty of time to study at the moment so some of them are asking for what book can i read what book can i read now <laughs> um, yeah uh, but some of them are, are struggling with time a lot because they they have children they're still working um they still have to take care of the house probably more than ever because they're they're 24 hours in the house um so we needed to adapt and create more flexibility um, to everyone. So we're giving more information to the ones, um, or uh, actually we're giving optional information and optional homework for the ones that have more opportunity to study and do things. Brilliant. And um, 
yeah, and the ones that don't have that time so they can stick to the essential information. And then once uh, things come down or maybe even after the teacher training, they can always return to um, uh, all this this uh, that we've been going through. And um, yeah, we, we still have a few teachers um, working in the teacher training at the moment. Actually, we were going to have this Sunday Richard um, giving a lecture about modern philosophy and uh, self-compassion. Maybe we can talk about that um, uh, himself. So it sounds uh, like you've been really, really busy, Tanya, which is always good to hear. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Right. Mandy, do you want to tell us what you've been up to? Yes. Hi, Gerard. Thank you very much for an early morning, Monday morning chat. So I am the founder of Blossom Yoga and Wellbeing. I teach, well, I'm, I'm a wellbeing coach for mums and I teach that through my yoga classes, baby massage. I also do one-to-one -one sessions with mums. So what I did as soon as this happened, because pregnant women became in the vulnerable category, I moved all my classes to Zoom. So they're still held live. So I do pregnancy yoga on a Monday and a Tuesday evening still. I do postnatal yoga on a Monday and a Wednesday morning and baby massage on a Wednesday, kind of lunchtime, quarter past 12. But as well as doing that, I'm very conscious that part of what I do and that's so important to me and mums is that community feel, that being able to ask other questions of mums, still feel that you're not isolated even though you're at home. So I do something that I've called virtual cups of tea. So three times a week on a Monday, Tuesday and a Wednesday at two o'clock, I have virtual cups of tea. One is for mums to be, one is for mums with new babe, newish babies, and then the other one is for anyone. And we just come and we meet via Zoom and we just have a conversation. So it can be just to how your week's been to a specific pregnancy related issue or a new mum related issue. And we just share community and we support each other. And I'm also offering on a Thursday, I do free half hour sessions one-to-one -one with mums. So that can be, they might want a yoga sequence from me. They might just want to chat about the week they've had, you know, issues, physical issues that they're worried about, um, you know, just coming to terms with motherhood. So those topics are on absolutely anything. And I just, I give my time to my mums to have those conversations on a one-to-one -one confidential basis that they might not want to talk about in a cup of tea around the classes as well we also talk at the beginning of a class and the end of a class so kind of we meet we chat we do the class everyone's on mute then we come back together at the end of the class so i try to keep it feeling like an in-person class as much as possible that everything is live and you get me to ask questions of i demonstrate the postures as i would in a class and everyone follows and the feedback i've had is that that's really important to the mums that they get that interaction they get that feeling that it's live and having something in their diary gives structure to the week and the day and it's something to look forward to and also I think that's just really key that we still know that we're here for each other even though things are really difficult and everyone's adjusted really well I mean from a from a new baby point of view it's actually easier to do a class from your house that's true, you that's have true. To pile everything into a car seat rush to get there on time if there's a nappy explosion, you're at home, you can deal with it. You know, you literally get ready five, 10 minutes before the class rather than the whole hour it can take to get a baby out of the house. So, so they are running really well and we're still, there are mums in the classes that I've never met in real life. So many of them have joined since we went into lockdown and I've had really positive feedback from them that they're still feeling very supported and part of a community and they don't feel uncomfortable asking questions and talking to the other mums. So yeah, so I am really busy. Brilliant. With all that. And, and I think the, that uh, support and community is particularly important for uh, both mums to be and new mums now. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Brilliant. And I think if there's anyone we need at this time, it's Richard. So Richard, <laughs> just let me spotlight you and then uh, give us some positivity. Yeah, it's, it's really interesting. So yeah, so my, I'm Richard and I run Think Psychology, which is a team of um, psychologists and psychotherapists. Uh, so we offer uh, therapy, we offer supervision to um, other, other therapists and um, other professionals. And we also do a lot of training. Um, so Tanya already mentioned we're teaching the the yoga 
uh, students next week. But yeah, so I deliver a lot of training to uh, um, NHS services, etc. So psychologists and therapists and physios and a bunch of people. Um, yeah, I think just to pick up on Jared's point, I think people were expecting a kind of absolute tidal wave of mental health problems with the pandemic, but I'm, I'm not I'm not entirely convinced that that's the case. I think that there are that there are pros and cons, and as always, like context is really important. I think if you're you know if you're living in a house with people that you really get on with and 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 uh, they care about you, and you've got I don't know garden space and, and you know money i think things are much easier than if you're up in a you know stuck up in a tower block somewhere with no no outside space with perhaps people you don't get on with so i think it's really different uh, depending on on your context um we've seen probably a, a, a drop if anything um in inquiries uh, for therapy over the over the you know course of the pandemic uh, p- partly i think because people know that it's going to be an online service and it's it's not as it's not quite the same it's not quite the same as meeting face to face but yes as soon as as soon as the the lockdown started we took everything online so all our therapy is online via zoom should have bought shares in that company um and um that's generally going pretty well you know i think it's you know it's not the same but uh, it's it's a reasonable substitute uh, people have adapted for the most part then one or two clients who think that they, they, they don't have enough confidential space at home for them to, to to sit in a you know have a therapy session but uh mostly it's been fine and uh, you know we'll continue to do that we've been doing it for a while to be honest even before the lockdown yeah um, <clears throat> one of the things with sort of the work I do and training up and down the country is that, you know, there's a bit of a national profile for the, for the, for the team. And so sometimes we get inquiries from other, you know, other parts of the country and other parts of the world. So we've been doing therapy online for a while. Um, uh, the supervision work we do with other therapists and professionals is that's pretty much just carried on. Uh, most of that's been online anyway, because of, uh, again, the geographical thing. Um, there's been some interesting sort of discussions like how do I adapt my therapy for an online delivery? Um, so obviously that's something we've had to, to uh, think about. Uh, the training, I suppose, is the thing that's taken the biggest hit, really, because um, we, you know, we did big groups face to face and now we can't do that. Some of that we've taken online. Um, it's it's weird some of it's been you know people haven't been interested like the nhs services for example they've cancelled that because they training is the last thing on their priority list at the moment um but then uh, we were we were doing a, a book launch um event it was going to be at the university of birmingham and we had uh, like 250 people sold for that uh and we took that online and now it's gone up to about 800 so it's 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 you know strange in terms of um the the demand i think this whole lockdown thing is less predictable than people might want to think it is um so yeah we're still doing therapy still doing supervision still doing training um just you know just altered it a bit um still writing so one of the things i've been doing during the lockdown is putting the finishing touches to another book which is a a, a, it's called the mindfulness and acceptance workbook for self-esteem so uh and helping people with self-related issues so that's all still happening so you know much as as is possible you know business as usual brilliant thanks for that and then so my name is jared so i run the physiotherapy clinic and so a bit like richard because we do a lot of female and male pelvic health we've always done uh, kind of a small number of online appointments, consultations, uh, particularly for patients from uh, different parts of the UK, a few from abroad. So what we were quite happy to do uh, was we closed the clinic quite early. You know, we closed in advance of when we had to close because we felt that was the the best thing to do. And in the last uh, few weeks, we've done a lot of online appointments. We've seen lots of uh, women during pregnancy, We've seen, done lots of mummy MOTs. We've seen um, Lisa, Sunday, myself. We've done a lot of um, female pelvic health. I myself do lots of male patients. Um, and then we've also seen some of the more traditional physio patients, you know, who people who've suddenly started running again or people who've, you know, they're working at home or they're working in the bedroom or the kitchen table, so they're a bit, bit achy. But I think probably it's more the pelvic health that we've seen. Um, and that's been really busy and I think people are um, appreciative of being being able to find us online and a bit like Mandy said it's it's a lot easier so you know I, I saw a couple of patients 
on Friday one was from Derby. Uh, so that saved him probably a four hour round trip. Um, I saw a mum from Harborn. She is a baby and a three year old. So it saved her having to the logistics of maybe coming to the appointment on her own and, and getting her partner or a relative to look after the kids. So that, that's been a lot, been easier in a way. Um, I think we, a bit like Richard, we also do a lot of teaching and, and that's actually got busier, which I would never have predicted. Uh, so the courses we run are probably quite specialised. They're, they're pelvic health, so not many people teach them. And in the past, people would have had to you know, fly over to Birmingham to do those, whereas now they, they can do them from the front room. So that's got really busy. Uh, which has been quite nice, and so it's it's. I think it's been unexpected, is 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 to say what's what's happened. But I'm really enjoying the online work, and I feel also that bit like the others that we are uh, doing quite a lot of good stuff to really support our local communities in you know Harborn, Kings Heath, Edgefast, and and also that that wider community, uh, that wider pelvic health community. Now, what I think what people also want to know, guys, is. Uh, What's, what's ahead of us or what, what are our plans? So I think I'll start. Uh, I think I'm, I took the decision to close the clinic uh, before we had to close it because I felt it was the right thing to do. And I am definitely going to really wait probably a considerable amount of time before I reopen. I want to make sure it's the right decision to do. Uh, I feel at the minute now is not the right time to reopen. In theory, the, the, you could get around reopening, but I feel it's not. I feel the right thing to do is to keep the clinic closed to kind of you know protect our communities, uh, you know protect ourselves and our staff, and and I feel that we we provide a really strong good service online. Uh, so although it's a really difficult thing to say, and I'm somewhat emotional about it, it's it's hard. It was hard to close the clinic, but I think at the minute the right thing to do is to keep it closed and continue to support people online and. I think that's one thing that, that myself, the other physios are happy with. And currently Lisa is working in ITU. So when you speak to her, you realize that, you know, things still are pretty grim out there. So I think, I think we all as, as professions are keen to do, do the right thing really. So, uh, right, why don't we go to you, Richard? What are your, what are, what are your plans? Because I think you kind of share my thoughts possibly. Um, yeah, I'd echo, so I was just saying, I'd, I'd echo most of what you said, really. I, th I think uh, there's a kind of um, oh yeah, a bit of a moral imperative. There's a sort of a leadership thing, I think, about, you know, if, if you've got a you know, position in the high street like we have, um, that, uh, you know, certainly if you're in the NHS, uh, psychotherapy, um, psychology service, etc., there are all remote and will be for some time I think uh, it, would, it just wouldn't feel right to, to kind of go back to a face-to-face -face service before they do um, so I think yeah I'll take my lead from, from the government um, advice and, and what goes on in the, in, in the NHS um, ob, you know obviously just like you said really keen to get back to working face-to-face -face because that, I think that you know just offers um, I don't know a bit more kind of uh, there's just something a bit more kind of potent about it. Um, I miss the sort of uh, in the face-to-face uh, -face training situation, the kind of uh, vibe of being in a room with, with people and, um, and education, something that I really care about. And um, so it feels to be doing that remotely is, you know, okay, but I, I'd like to get back to that as soon as possible, but, but only when it's safe to do so. So uh, it's really difficult to put a timescale on it at the moment, but I think it's going to be, um, it's going to be months rather than weeks, I should think. Brilliant, Richard. Thanks for that. Thanks for that. Right. Uh, and then Mandy, uh, maybe what are your plans? Yeah, I, I realistically think that I won't be doing my postnatal classes face to face until September at the earliest because I am very aware of the, the health and safety of mums and their babies. And there's a nervousness around coming out in groups, which has to be balanced with the need to do face to face, as you guys have said. From a personal point of view, I find it much harder to teach remotely than I do face to face because you're not picking up on the energy of people and you're not getting that, the feeling back. So from a personal point of view, I would love to be teaching face to face as soon as I can. But from a sensible safety point of view, I don't think that will be until September for mums and babies. My pregnancy classes, it may be before that because I continue to teach those throughout the summer 
if there was an opportunity to do safe distance meetups with people before September, so mums and babies, then I would definitely be for doing that because I know from conversations with my mums, they're finding that the hardest, the not being able to see people to talk, even if it's at the other side of a bench or however far away. But I'm not going to do anything that puts anyone at risk or makes anyone feel uncomfortable. So I think September at the earliest probably, and obviously it's guided by when children go back to school as well. You know, mums have got older children. I've got two children. We've all got children as well. If they're not at school, then they need to be taken care of. So at the moment, I think pregnancy, I'm not quite sure, but the postnatal stuff, I don't think well, classes will be till September, but I'm always available for one-to-one -one stuff with mums as well. I'd like mums to be to know that, that they can use me on a one-to-one -one basis if they need to do, not just in a class situation. Brilliant, Mandy. And then Tanya. So I think... Um, I'm a little bit with you guys. Uh, we want to keep people safe and staff safe. So we're not going to um, open the studio in the next couple of months. Uh, we hardly believe that. And um, when we do, we probably will have, we're gonna follow the, the, the guidelines of the government, but um, we already studying what we can do when, when we reopen to, to keep everyone safe and uh, taking care of everyone. And um, we will probably have to go for the social distancing, um, keeping the mats um, uh, away from each other and uh, readapting the schedule to give more time between classes for people to go out of the studio and uh, other people to come in. Um, yeah, we, we, we aim for, for everyone to feel safe. Um, we aim everyone to uh, feel that we're taking care of, of uh, staff and uh, the, the students. Um, and yeah, we, we, we're thinking, thinking and planning um, what we can do. And for now also enjoying uh, what we're doing at the moment online on the platforms and um, I think it's been important important to everyone to keep uh, the community connected. We're having a re really good feedback from um, students and trainees. Uh, everyone is happy that we keep, keep going with things, with uh, yoga online and the, the teacher training online. So yeah, <laughs> let's go with the flow at the moment. Brilliant. And I think, I think what comes true from speaking to, to all of you, because I, you know, I speak to all of you quite a bit, is that the people doing online yoga are really happy. You know, Mandy's mums are really happy. Richard's patients, you know, he's, he's got a team of clinical psychologists. I bump into some of them. Their clients are really happy. And I know the feedback we get from our physio patients is they're really happy and delighted as well. So I think the way I look at it is, is when people ask me, well, when are you reopening? I say, well, we haven't closed. We've just changed how we deliver the service. Yeah. And, and I think that goes for all of us. I think that goes for all of us. So I'd like to really thank Richard, Mandy and Tanya for catching up. It's, it's uh, Monday mornings in COVID can always be a bit tricky. Uh, it's, it's, it's a start of another week, but I think it's been a really, it's been brilliant to see you all. And it's been really a positive start to my morning. And I think people, you know, between the four of us, we, we see lots and lots of, people from the, our communities and I think people will be happy to know that we're still here that we've been quite creative and busy and that we uh, that that we're still here for them so I'd like to say just maybe say does everyone say goodbye and then I'll stop the recording thanks Gerard bye thanks Gerard bye, bye. thank you bye.